Hello again. It's been brought to my attention that my video quality sucked, which I kind of knew. So we're trying it on my phone and we'll see how it goes. The colors are a little weird, but we'll, we'll see if this works better. Homework seems like a good place to start, so I'm going to tell you about the homework that I had last week. Uh, I was supposed to come up with a list of all the things that are triggers for me that I... Um, I try to avoid either thinking about or, or being reminded of or places that I might avoid going or people that I might avoid talking about or to. Um, and I also had to come up with a list of all of the positive coping skills that I might use in a situation where I'm afraid and the negative coping skills that I should be avoiding um, that I personally do use. So this is kind of interesting for me to really examine my behavior and and how I'm interacting with uh, my disorder and how I'm interacting with the world around me and how my disorder affects my life. And I started thinking about um, how my disorder affects other people. Um, this has always been a really um, big issue for me. I've always felt guilty about what happens when I get upset and I take out my feelings on other people. And uh, I, you know, I've spent a lifetime trying to internalize all of these feelings so that I didn't hurt anybody else. But the, you know, I'm not perfect at that anyway. I'm not perfect at keeping it all inside. And sometimes it does come out and I will get very angry at other people, say things I don't mean, Often I, I have burned bridges, uh, ruined friendships because I was in the moment and I was freaked out and I needed them to leave me alone and they, they didn't really understand what was happening and so they pushed back like, no, no, I'm not going to leave you alone. We need to talk about this. And finally in desperation I would just spew verbal abuse trying to get them to go away. And... Um, Afterwards, I always feel really terrible about it. You know, I, I hate the person that I become when I'm afraid and when I'm, you know, trying to defend myself. I, I, don't, I don't like the ugliness that comes out. And that has always been kind of, it's, it's not really, I don't know if it's a symptom of PTSD, but for me, it's certainly um, a kind of side effect, you know, where... I deal with a lot of guilt and shame from the things that I do when I feel like I'm out of control. And um, that's, that's been really hard for me. Um, and I think it's something that people don't normally, doesn't normally occur to people when they're thinking about all the ways that PTSD affects your life. Another thing that can be a really big issue, and I think this is something that people with any kind of mental illness deal with is what happens when you do freak out either in a public place or in front of people that you don't know well enough to feel comfortable having a meltdown which is pretty much everybody and you may not take it out on them or do anything you know mean that you feel guilty about but you might for instance have a panic attack in the middle of the hall at school or in front of somebody you barely know, or on the bus, you know, and um, having this kind of vulnerable moment in front of people, sometimes you can't help it, and it exposes you to a lot of stigma and a lot of judgment, and it also, it makes you feel really vulnerable, and um, it can be humiliating. I think that we as human beings need that mask that we show to the world that, you know, the everything's fine, I'm okay, this is the face that I want to show everybody else. And to a certain extent, it's okay that the person that we are in public is not the same as the person that we are in private. It's appropriate to hide some of our mess from people that we don't know well, who, you know, we don't trust, who don't understand what we're going through. It's good to 
keep some of that private, it protects us. And when you have any kind of mental illness where things are out of control and you end up having an out of control moment in front of people that you don't know, you know, you lose that sense of dignity. You lose that protection, that facade, you know, that keeps you safe. And it can be just really, it's a degrading experience. And I know that when I have kind of a meltdown or whatever, show my, you know, craziness in public, it always feels like my whole life is such a mess. I am such a mess. Here I am spilling my guts out on the street for everybody to see. It's overwhelming, you know, and, and I, I think that that's something that everybody deals with sometimes when you're going through really intense things, even if you don't have a mental illness. But I, I think for people with mental illness, that kind of humiliation and vulnerability and dealing with that stigma is a huge part of their lives that, again, is I think something that doesn't always occur to other people who don't know what it's like. Um, you know, any kind of illness or disorder that affects your mind, there's, there's so much more to it than just the list of symptoms. Um, that you read about in the DSM-4, you know, it affects every facet of your life. You don't just experience these five couple things and then the rest of your life is totally normal. It affects everything. It affects your sleep and your relationships and your eating habits. I don't think that people understand just how pervasive it is and... Um, you know, how it pretty much, you know, it, it ruins every aspect of your life. It's, it's a big deal.